All right, hey, how's it going, boys? Uh, X to heal you here, and I just wanted to make a quick video talking about what is currently my favorite division. So in this recent patch, they split Hunter and Zentrum, or Berlin and Grouper, or whatever you want to call it, into two different divs. One of them is six, yeah, 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 and then the other one is the best Moto div in the game, in my humble opinion. <laughs> but uh, so talking about six, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. It could definitely be pretty good. It's got heavy tanks and whatnot, but uh, having your special forces in the helos, like limited to just helo transports, definitely kind of hurts because you have to start the game tending to be 39th with uh, T64s instead of T80s. Kind of sucks. And then like, you don't even have like really good helicopters to earn. It's pretty pretty good for its price point. Actually, it's really good for his price point, yeah, but uh, trying to um, use this in an opener to the, the maximum potential, or the early game even, to the maximum potential is pretty hard to try to shift it into your uh, favor. A lot of people are really digging this. I think it's pretty good, too. I just I prefer to bring the MI-8 T with more rockets. I like a lot of rockets. This does not have enough rockets for me, personally. I'm a big fan of the rockets. If it's going to have rockets, it's going to have a lot of rockets for, for me to want it. But, uh, six, yeah, overall, I think it's pretty mid. Having two bucks is really good. Two cards of bucks. Like, your AA is really decent here. A good AA tab. But the, the tank tab, it just feels like the T64s aren't quite cheap enough for you to really, um, flex the advantage of them being cheaper in a numerical way you know and uh, at the same time they're they're also not strong enough to be competing with like the next higher tier you know what i'm saying like the t80bvs and the the m1a1s of the world are just gonna rip you to shreds uh i i have had these perform very good against m1a1s though the t64s and the t64 it's all about uh RNG there, I think. It's a pretty close fight. But, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that, despite being a much lighter vi division, that, uh, this one's the better one. The new, new Zentrum. Mostly, it comes down to the Washushin and the Moshushin. So, the Moshushin, I love you guys. Even the SVDs. Even though the SVDs are kind of, kind of negligible. It's a very specific type of situations where you'd rather have an SVD than just another monster with the RPG. Or, like, you just put them somewhere to defend with a recon squad or something like that, and they're pretty, pretty decent. Monster BTR. I don't need to say anything about it. You could bring them in double vet. Strength is 8, which is really decent. Two LMGs, also very decent. But what really makes... All of the moto forces in this div stand out against uh, I, other infantry divisions is uh, the resolute trait. These guys will just sit there and fight until they die. They don't get routed like, at all. I get to see a single one route. They will stand there and get shot at in an open field until they die. <laughs> they don't care. Masushin Metis, dope as fuck. Is it necessary to vet them up once? Probably not. I mean, you could go for the low vet ones, but I just, whenever, like, it's too easy to want to get them into infantry engagements. If you, if you, if you're trying not to engage infantry with these guys, then you can definitely bring them low vet, but I bring them up vet because it's too easy for me to want to engage infantry with them. And the Mossus and Strela at triple vet. Obviously, it's triple vetted, so that way the Strela is as close to being able to hit anything as it can be. I still think that this this is a really good squad. And uh, having the excuse to bring them triple vet like that just means I have a triple vet monster squad. Even without the Strela, that's that's pretty decent for fighting other infantry. I mean, it doesn't have the two LMGs like like the Masushin BTR does. SVD doesn't even have that, which is interesting. Only the Masushin BTR does. Maybe there's a stronger argument to drop these and bring just a second card of Masushin BTR. But uh, I really like these guys, especially whenever you deploy them around the Washington Fury, who also has the Strela. 
it's like these guys become your man pad force, and uh, obviously the commander is going to buff them up to 50% on Estrella, so it'll actually be able to hit you. It's really useful for stopping lynxes or gazelles, and uh, that's how I've seen it function in the game. KDA Shushin, just amazing for assault. Amazing assault force, amazing front line force. This guy's really tan for some reason. <laughs> Oh, there's another really tan guy. Interesting. I don't like the way he's looking at me personally. But uh yeah, KDA pretty pretty damn good. These guys will definitely be your assault force though. Even though the KDA Shushin just because the sheer mass of this force can assault, the Washishin are definitely super strong. For forty five points you get ten man assault security resolute. And they have really decent weapon weaponry. Really good. I don't bring them in the SPW just because I think that whenever I use Washington, I'm either going to send them into a, a forest or I'm going to send them into a town. But everything else will have the SPW. And the SPWs are really necessary to have around for fire support purposes. The KPVT and uh, pen light vehicles, and it does absolute shit tons of damage to infantry, even in cover. It destroys threats. Artillery tab, you can really go with the 152s or the 122s. Either, either or, whatever you want. You want more a sniper type of thing, you get this. You want more guns overall, you get this. This is a very cool, unique unit. They're definitely interchangeable. I'll go with right now actually because it's just slightly easier to get it out uh early which is a, a big part of this div is like you really want to be able to just keep on pumping shit out as uh your main tank force is t55s which means if for you to win the game you have to stop your opponent from scaling up his force in other words attack 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 kill 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 Every time you see a tank, you have to kill it. Every time you see a big tank, it has to die immediately. You can't let them get up to two, three, four T-80BVs or M1A1s. In a situation like that, you're kind of fucked. So, see a tank that's bigger than your T-55s? Kill it. By all means necessary. It has to die. Another key point of this division here is the pack guns. You're kind of forced to take the 85 millimeters. You could take the T-34s if you feel like it. Personally, I don't think the T-34s have enough utility. I'd rather I just have these. Uh, it is up to you if you want to mimic me, this deck, and to uh, up vet them or down vet them. Personally, I just want more guns because the moment these guys get spotted, they kind of tend to die. But if they can go unspotted, they do really well. So, I bring them in low vet. Maybe this guy should be on at least halfway vet. But, uh, you do want sheer numbers. You you want as many of these as you can. And then the transport selection, I've been having them in the MTLB just that way I can survive, uh, artillery better, theoretically. But in practical application, it seems like you really just want them on the front line as fast as possible. So, MTLB is not the way to go. But uh, the sheer mass of T-55s you get in this division is crazy. And uh, 18 T-55As at one veterancy is a force to be reckoned with, surely. With the correct tactical application and uh, just usage of these placement, positioning, tactical application, all of that, uh, T-55As are really the perfect light tank, in my opinion. And, yeah, they don't have smoke, but... You have smoke here and here, you know what I'm saying? And there's woods everywhere. There's so many different ways you can reverse slope people into your range. And you can al almost always outnumber people as well with the T-55As. The only thing you can outnumber would be somebody who's spamming 1A1s. But if he's spamming 1A1s, you're just going to win. Because I think the T-55A is just flat out better than 1A1. Coming over to the recon tab, the Washington off glare. Pretty decent. He has a Dragonov and Battle Rifles. Uh, special Forces, Shock. Uh, I think he's a little bit too small of a squad to use for combative scenarios. Like, it can fight 
if it wants to. But with this squad, you definitely want to take 2v1s. You want to be backed up by another squad or something significant to fight. You don't want to fight with just this guy alone, even though he could probably hold his own very well. You just don't want to put your precious recon into that type of scenario. Off clear in the KPV. There's not much to say here. It is what it is. SPW 40, really good for early fire support, for winning some of the recon versus recon engagements on the flanks of the map type of thing. Like this guy, backed up with this guy, will definitely kill like a a Jaeger squad or something like that, you know. But uh, just uh, stay cognizant and make sure nothing else shows up. Otherwise, the, the scale's going to tip it back against you. A tab. I've been running the ZUs instead of uh, Strela 2Ms or Shilkas. Shilkas are just ass. The ZUs, I feel like, are way better for killing helicopters with ambush tactics than the Shilkas are. Because what typically happens is they see the Shilka and the Shilka's just going to slowly roll after the helicopter at 45 kilometers an hour. And all they have to do is click away from your Shilka with the helicopter to avoid it. But if they fly over a tree line where one of these is in it, the helicopter's certainly going to die at that point. And uh, six cubs, truly a Sam force to be reckoned with six of these. Not really worried about seed because they're all low vet. Uh, and my micro is pretty good as well. But uh, once I hit like a critical mass of like four, there's just, you can't fly any planes over me at all. Blue tab, not many options here. Once again, I just take the guy with the most rockets, try to keep him at his max range, 2100 meters, try to micro him well, keep him alive for as long as possible for fire support. Uh, it's not even necessary to have one of these in your deck, I don't think, personally. Air tab. Air tab is where things get interesting. There's a lot of choices here. What I tend to go for is I go for the, the things that kill and live. <laughs> If it's uh, highly likely to kill and also highly likely to survive, I'm taking it. So that's why I'm not going for these guys, even though they are pretty cool. And you could probably do some like really, really crazy air rush strats with this division if you wanted to. Uh, UPK, kind of trash. Trash. <laughs> this guy is the new variant of the MiG-21, which I think is really cool because both of his missiles are 50%. Yeah, I guess it... Well, actually, there's no downside to it at all. It's just the better choice. Straight up. And then the MiG-21 Napalm is also really cool. This thing does significant damage to infantry squads. It also does significant damage to tanks, though it probably won't kill the tanks. Most likely, it's not going to kill the tanks. It won't even kill AMX-10 uh, recons in one pass, unless the person just sits there in the fire. If they sit there on the Napalm, you can kill it. I've brought a Leo 2A3 down to 3 HP with one of these because he just sat in the fire for a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward deck, too, man. Like, you have strong motorized infantry. You have T-55 spam. Now, what's the what's the strategy with this type of uh, force composition? Get in their face. Attack, attack, attack. Constantly. And I personally love that. Uh, another way you could do this division is you could have the Strela 2Ms for extra anti-helo if you want to, which is a good choice. All you'd have to do is drop this guy. You don't really need him. You'll have five more CVs, or you could keep it this way, and then you can put this guy in there, and then your CVs have uh, smoke launchers. This guy has smoke. Apparently this guy does not have a smoke launcher. I thought he did. Ryan, I take that back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's it. And then the, the RM-70s are here to, uh, well, they do RM-70 things. You just, you know, if there's no other way to hit a heavy tank group or something like that, like if you can't use your aircraft on them or whatnot, you could RM-70 his AA and then come in with the bombers, or you could RM-70 the tanks themselves and then just push it forward with your T-55s to try to clear out the AA. You know, there's a... Uh, you have options here, definitely. But you don't have options in playstyle. The only playstyle for this division is forward. That is it. And now we can go into some replays. So, uh... 
I don't even know what I want to go into. I guess I'll go into the, the first one I played with this division. It's the first game I played with this division. So it's going to be a little bit of a different uh, deck composition than what I just uh, displayed. But you'll see a little bit of it. A little bit of it. Yamato, really cool uh, font name. So he's, a, he's a good player. But this is back when I uh, decided Shulka Spam was the way. <laughs> Uh, I was really scared of his MiG-27s because they did make changes to uh, the VDV to have a lot of MiG-27s. And I was also rocking the T-34s uh, this game as well, which I have since dropped and I will not be putting back in my deck. I do not think T-34 has enough utility. Yeah, it's pretty cheap and you can do some cheesy stuff with it. But if you play this deck right, you don't need to do the cheesy stuff with it anyways. And also, you need, like, a certain uh, mass of T-34s to pull off the cheese, right? Unless you're just using them as fire support like I am right here, like, pretending it's an IFV or something. But, uh... What was I saying about the T-34s? Oh, yeah, if you want to do, like, the smoke push strats with the T-34s, where you just smoke all the way up and have a swarm of all the T-34s, like, you only get one of those. You get one shot. <laughs> and it better work. Otherwise, you're screwed. And, uh, that's just not... Something that I like. Shilka. Just got 1v1 by the Mi-24V. Why I took the Shilkas out of my deck. Shilkas are horrible. Cub's gonna get them eventually, though. Thank God. But, uh, you see at the front here, I was able to hold his infantry assault here pretty well with my motorized forces, because mine are really strong. Over here, pushing with KDA. Got a Conquerors and a Metis up and a Walk player as well. And uh, I still have a lot of my AA up. Cub, Shulka, Cub, Shulka. Cub and Shulka over here are dead now, though. Uh, yeah, Shulkas are definitely trash, dude. I had eight of them out in one game. It was a team game, mind you. And uh, a Mirage flew directly over all eight and just lived. <laughs> like, it had one HP. So nine's the tipping point. But, like, I need how many Shulkas for it to kill a plane? It's just not worth it, bro. It's not good. Now here we are, the T-55 swarm, anchored by the KDA solution. Eliminated those conquers. Would have been gone different for him if he had medicine position or uh, infantry conquers. Certainly. Big 21 napalm destroyed both medis instantly. Pretty decent. Mi-8s out here, cleaning up for me. Big 29 takes out the Mi-8. Now he's just got. Bunch more medics coming in here. And, uh, yeah, this is all I'm doing here is uh, executing the strategy I said. Just get up in their face and stick it to them, man. Like, you gotta. <laughs> like, if I were to. Okay. You know, my brain doesn't work enough to say what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, like, if this was boxing, you'd be the guy who's always, like, up in somebody's face, you know, rolling under their punches and shit, and hitting them in the body, to the body, and uh, your your opponents are going to be the guys who are trying to, out there trying to jab and whatnot. You just skip the jabs. You, you roll under one of the jabs, you get in there, into the phone booth, and you just start throwing hooks to the liver, to the kidney cuts in there, you know. You, you skip the jabs. You skip the jabs and the crosses. The ones and the twos are not in, in the game for you. You're a short boxer, basically. Yeah. Oh, there's not much else to, to look at here, so we're just going to go into another one. Do this one next. This is pretty short. Pretty cool. Fun game, Big D. Uh... This was a really long deployment. Uh, sorry, boys. 
supposed to be getting right into the action here. So, here we are. So, here's the heavy motive force right here, and uh, I want you to pay attention to how good they are. Like, the Metis just takes out that. Aeromobile Scouts is almost instantly melted by the SBW 70s, as along with the SAS. Mashusha Metis is going to take out this fox as well, pretty well. Strella's up here providing AA against the possible gazelles that are coming. And then over here, I have my Washington Fury with Estrella and my Strella here, my Mashusha Estrella and the Mashusha Metis. So essentially, uh, an infantry platoon can be its own AA, its own AT, and its own anti infantry altogether with the Mashusha SVD, which is pretty cool. I mean, he's just out of range here, but. There we go. Now you s Well, I think my Masushi and Strela just died instantly before it could shoot. But here's the pack guns coming in. B-55s duking it out with the Warrior Milan. It's got a lot of armor. Jaguar comes after my cubs. It's okay. I got four more. And uh, now we're just going up. Masushi and Fury pops into this building. Shoots at the Gazelle rocket. Doesn't take it out. This one does take out its gazelle rocket, though. It's the F2 right in the face. Pretty nice. Misses that time. But, uh, it's functioning as advertised. SPW 70, flat gun over here, defending this. And then I have Hello Washington coming in here to take back this whole side of the map by themselves. He does have a fox behind my lines, which is crazy, but I saw him capture these transports, so I know he's here. And you're going to see me redirect my cubs in a moment to not die. If he killed these cubs, he probably would have won this game. <laughs> but yeah, there he is. Redirecting as soon as I can see them. Jaguar HE2 coming out. On my walk. Zoo gun. Got the fit toe. F toe. Top attack toe. HSF, don't stand a chance. Um, not too much to talk about here. It's just a really strong opener. Even against a division that's known for having a strong opener like 2UK, as shown. Go check out this one. So 5E versus uh, Berlin and Grouprung. On airport. Definitely favors 5e. I think, right? Well, mate, did I lose this one? I might have lost. I don't know. But uh, you're going to see. So he's deploying really heavy into AMX-10s. He likes his ninja tanks. Personally, I don't think a tank should be a ninja. I don't care. A little bit of a commando drop right there. I just deployed my walk off right here because I figured I wasn't going to be able to do anything to get into here in the early game anyways. And then over here, it's all moto forces. SVD, Metis, SVD, Metis. Two SPG-9s. This time, I had SPG-9s in my deck. Uh, not sure why I put them in there. I mean, I figured I, I could, so I did. And I guess it is pretty good against uh, a division like 5e to have SPG 9s in there. If you're worried about auto cannons, I guess the SPG 9s are a really good choice to put in the division. Probably drop uh, the Matsushin SVD for those. Something. <laughs> Maybe the leader. Up to you. I have to micro the piss out of my cubs because people really like trying to kill my cubs. I have to micro them so hard. Pack MT-12 out here putting in that work. So is the Mashusin SVD and others. Honkers is about to get in this building. Pretty nice. I do try to push out across this field right here. It doesn't work out for me because there is a tank there. I whiff that or he dodges it. Whatever suits your agenda better. AMX 10s are damaged and just sitting off to the side now. He does have an AMX-10 right there, which is an issue for me. And uh, I have to rebuild my my Sam. So I have quad cubs out here now because I know that he's going to be bomber spamming me a lot. He already showed his hand by buying as many as he has. 
Mando's coming in right there. That's okay. I'll deal with that later. Uh, bombed the Milan over there. And now I'm starting to get my, my zones capped. Yep. SBW's coming up over here. Probably just to help me see things. And provide some fire support. I do have a helicopter over here just to help me get in there. Two T fifty five A's, Conkers, SPG nine, off layer, SVD, two KDA. This is a pretty formidable assault force against the the numbers of things that he has defending here. Now, if uh, the tank ends up just sitting in the napalm, uh, the MiG twenty one napalm will kill it. But a lot of the times that doesn't happen, and tanks end up surviving the bombing run. Over here, you see the SPG nine, the KPVs, T fifty fives, all putting in that work. Uh, it just seems like he never really got up a. Uh, an actual like functional force that could could fight like yeah he has all this ninja shit everywhere but the ninja shit's not too good at too good in a straight up fight which sometimes you have to get into a straight up fight you know and it's just not there that gun's coming out here but uh the writing is on the wall at this point he invested really heavily into the ninja shit the ninja shit didn't really pay off then he invested really heavily into air shit and I have four cubs. Five cubs in the middle of the map. Pretty straight up. Another one or two. I really... I, I love this deck, man. I just love this one. We'll do... Do one of my defeats. Why not? One of my losses. This deck. Now, this deck is pretty susceptible to... Uh, well, I mean... It can go either way. It can either be really good for you to have a narrow map, or it can be very bad for you to have a narrow map. In my case, it was very bad for me. Yuki Paw is a grad enjoyer, and uh, the map being as narrow as it is means that grads are really good on this map because there's not a lot of places to flank around or to, to try to hide or do anything. There's just not a lot of space to maneuver on this map, and if you can't maneuver, you can... Artillery is going to be really strong. Start with a fob against me. Here we go. Really defensive opener with the, the MGs and whatnot. SBW over there providing fire support. T55As are over here. And now I'm pushing forward with my Moto Force. It's again, it's a very strong defensive force that he has. I am on the uptick on him. Start with two Cubs as well. Eddie Ashushin in here. T80 BV, first one's out. I gotta do something about that immediately. My bomber comes in and it gets nailed by the cub first shot. But a joke. It hurts. The grads are already out. I have to maneuver my T55s in a way to where they won't get hit by RPGs, but they're in knife fighting range with the T80 BV, which trying to do both of those things at the same time is very difficult. Uh, the truth is here, I definitely could have contended better for this game if I had gotten some artillery up and tried to snipe his cub. If I did that and I was able to use my bombers again, because, like, this cub goes away, man, the game is different entirely. But, as you see here, I just slammed my face into him, and in this case it didn't work, because Yuki, Yuki Paw is a really good player, and you can't really just slam your face against somebody like Yuki Paw. I mean, sometimes I do, and sometimes it works, but, uh... Most of the time it doesn't. And uh, also this map is very disadvantageous to uh, somebody who's trying to utilize aircraft because there's so many little forests where people can hide, block lines of sight and whatnot. And uh, the SU-22 AT planes are virtually useless against somebody with good control. Now I have the great idea of coming out here with smoke mortars, dropping smoke everywhere and then just once again shoving my, my fist into his face. TDBV almost gets caught there. Uh, I have to maintain, uh, I have to try to get some forward momentum going, because uh, if I don't, you might say, it's useless for you to push, you should just sit back. I can't sit back, he has grads, he's he's more than willing to just sit there for 20 minutes, just leveling my town. I have to strike, I have to strike out at him, which uh, makes it really tough. None of the KDA shoots didn't hit anything, I could use a smoke right here, there is none though. And I have a lot of shit over here. More of my shit should probably be over here. This got, this Metis could definitely be over here. It'd be way useful. SU-22 can't get a shot in because my I'm smoking him off for him. 
for himself. And uh, we're still going. The 122s are out. Shooting at uh, where that TABV was. Not too great. I mean, if I had to aim just a little bit over here, that would have been a great strike. But it wasn't. And uh, 100 mil. Failed by the TADBV. MI8 dumping all of its rockets onto the TADB. Can't kill it though. And I. Nope, I can't even get into the zone. And all of my forces are dead. Just like that. Over here, I did think about opening up another flank, but he had killed the, the mortar that I wanted to use over there, so I have to smoke up with these guys instead. I had to wait for them to reload and all that. And uh, if I had controlled this a little bit better, I probably would have been in there better as well. I do have two Mossy Shinstrellas here, shooting at the Mi-24P, scored two hits with them, and then my uh, my plane goes in to take it out. Wish I had a cub over here, that'd be very useful. I went a little bit too deep with the 122s. The 122s, like, uh, I just wasn't able to maintain enough vision to do what needed to be done, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, game's over. There's no way I can get back. But, uh, I definitely think that the game was winnable. I just needed to play it different than I did. Alright. Let's go ahead and watch this. Now, this one is the most phone booth boxing game yet. So, I'm playing against 5e on uh, Black Forest. Really good. 5e map, Black Forest is. And, uh, well, here's the deployment. Going to all of these. And, uh, there's definitely some things I could have done that would have been better for me in this game as well. And, uh, you know, well, we're only getting better. One replay at a time, we're all getting better. Lock off player over here, gonna end with the commandos. Ninja tank. Kills everything that goes over there. Of course it does, because it's a ninja tank. And he's just shooting at me. I can't see him. Can't do anything about it. I did. I would want to run my T-55s over there, but I can't. Of course, the bomber doesn't kill it either. Doesn't even do too much to those Grenadier Voltigeers. But that's okay. Over here, trying to 1v1 this AMX-10RC. The AMX-10 does win that somehow. W's destroy the fab and uh, well, it's a really high attrition game so far for me. You pick up his uh, CV right there. Is a good snipe for me, I think. I do you know that he has an AMX 10 right there with only one HP? I don't think I ever try to finish it off though. And uh, there we go, Kitty A. Shushin, Moss Shushin Swarm with the T55s backing it up, doing what it does. The T-55s are putting in that work. He has to resort to using bombers. I have my SAM site up. Ready, though. The MX-30s are here. Now he has his own SAM site up. And uh, once again, uh, a pinnacle mistake when playing this deck is to not try to artillery strike the whirlwinds. You definitely need to try to take out uh, any type of SAM sites that uh, your opponent puts up in order to use this deck because you really need your aircraft to be able to take out tanks that are bigger than yours. Uh, another mistake I made, uh, I just let him stay on plus one. I never capped Charlie. I also took, like, ten minutes to cap Delta. Pretty embarrassing. It is what it is, though. Now my, my AT guns are out here. But the AT guns are really weak against the AMX-10s, because the AMX-10s can see. They are ninja tanks that can see other ninja units. And now I'm trying to do a little smoke maneuver over here. Get up in there. Hopefully it works. Max over here, he did get his howitzer up to counter battery me. What a shame. And when Napalm comes in, not sure what for, but it did. And T-55s, group anti-char, kills two T-55s on low cohesion before it dies. Crazy. Imagine if I had that platoon of T-55 still alive. If I had just waited for the infantry to go up and clear out the group of Anchitar before I pushed up those T-55s, I could have done a penetrating maneuver like this even sooner and had more T-55s on the field. And now that's where this division gets fun. 
is like, okay, you have all these light tanks that are really good for their price and they have no smoke. Now keep them alive. <laughs> keep them alive while continually killing stuff with them. It's not easy. Certainly not easy, but like I said, that's where the fun comes in. Yep. And you see, it's just going. And uh, with this division, you really want to try to exploit any breakthroughs you get. Now, uh, coming back to the I want my AT guns to be faster point. I want my AT guns to be faster. I was hoping to get the, the commander right there. I wanted to just run my commander up into his sh into his shit, but uh, it didn't work out that way. That's okay. Sometimes it's like that. Get this medicine to this building. I have these guys over here. They are on hold fire for some reason. Don't remember putting them on hold fire or why that happened. I do have my SAM site up. Four cubs. The quad cub. Somehow Jaguars just fucking live anyways though. But that's okay. And two T-55s over here. Once again, imagine if I had just tried my best to keep the other T-55s alive. This could have been six instead of just two. Or it could have been eight, actually. Instead of just two. And uh, I have two more over here. And these pack guns. If they got up here, like, just a minute sooner, I could have stopped this push entirely. And uh, that's why uh, earlier you saw me put the, the pack guns into the motorized transports rather than the, the armored ones. But uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this deck so far. I'm really fine-tuning it and figuring out its play style. And uh, I hope this video helps you guys catch up onto this deck as well. It's a fun, challenging deck. And uh, I think everybody should try it. Everybody. Now imagine if I had taken out his uh, SAM sites earlier, and maybe I had a MiG-21 Napalm Bomber still in here. I could just destroy all four of those right now. But they're all dead. And my Conkers are all missing. Great. Oh, he hit that time. Oh, nice. I don't know who that was. But he's dead too. Washington Fuhrer. I like this guy because you can hide him really easy. Big thing. Oh yeah, I came over here and I did a uh, did a thing of T55s to cap that real quick too. Got on the plus three for a little bit. Grads are out here finally helping me kill that AT plane. Snipes that CV he used to cap cap back his zone. Now the grads are gonna go for where I think his AMXs are, but they've moved. That's been revealed now as well. And uh, I am entirely out of infantry units, so I'm deploying recon like it's infantry. Double grad going off. Get one of the AMXs, one of the other ones, just live. It's something that AMXs like to do is just live for no reason sometimes. It's kind of crazy. Definitely is kind of crazy. Uh, once again, if these bad guns had just gotten up here sooner, I probably could have done a little bit more. Now he's going to recap this zone. I'm trying to bomb his AMX-30. Can't see it. Get it. Then I have two more CVs out here. Mashushin Strello is right there as well. But he has yet more ninja tanks. Because 5e is just one of those decks that have uh, limitless availability. 5e and 5 Panzer, both of them. Limitless availability on everything. You can just get as much as anything as you want to. But uh, there we go. That's victory. If the game was going to go on for five more minutes longer, I definitely would have lost. But that is the victory. Good job. GG. Little jumper. But, uh, dude, I, I love this division. I love this division. It's the only division I want to play ever now. Really, really. Um, I don't know what a, another good game was. What division was I playing against this guy? I was playing this one. So this is one of my even earlier games. Super not fine-tuned at all. But this is against Third Armored. And I'd like to show you guys how it looks against Third Armored. Like Third Armored. Uh, no Shilka spam out here yet. Pretty cool. But uh, you see, I have an entirely different approach in this game. Starting with a lot of KDA Sushin instead of more uh, Matsushin medicine ones.
And a lot of T-55s. So this one's a T-55 rush, certainly. Seems as if he expected it, sort of. Phantom HE can't kill a KDA squad. That's pretty crazy. T-55's right here, up in the face. I guess the T-55 rush strat is a little bit stronger than the the full-on moto and strat. But uh, they're all dead. Like, yeah, I claimed the plateau, but it's all dead. And he had dedicated a lot of his force over here as well. Uh, Cream Frenchie had proved to me this game that the military patrol, even though it is super expensive for what it is now, is still worth it. He used them very well. Made me jealous. Went in, killed an Apache right there with my, my super cool AA MIGs. And, uh, yeah, I still have the T-34s at this point. Same sights up. U22AT, looking for that M1A1. I do get his M1A1 commander right there. T-34 is a free to start laying down the hate. Menace out of ammo, pack gun. It's caught out in the open dies. And this is before I put the cluster bomber in my deck too. If I had the cluster bomber in my deck, I would have killed all this already and the game would have already been over. But that's not what I had in deck at this point. See more KDA shoots and conquers and pack guns coming out. And then also I could have pushed this front over here and uh, definitely secured a, a point tick for myself here. Come in with the T-34s over here for the flank, just to try to exercise control over this flank, make it harder for him to maneuver and position myself to be able to push out a CV of this zone if necessary. Like this side, right? Forced. Now he has brought out a howitzer of his own to start destroying my AT guns, because the AT guns are certainly going to be a big issue for him. I had hit that uh, M1A1 right there with the Napalm Bomber, it moved away, and then the Conquerors got a side shot, killed it pretty good. Quick fixes, don't die. Don't try to dive on quick fixes. It's bait. Quick fixes, do not die. And you see myself just positioning over here. But you also see uh, the Cubs are out of ammo. And it's a really strange relationship this division has with ammunition and supplies. It's like you can either buy supplies or you can buy units. <laughs> That's what it feels like, especially if you're playing as an aggressive as I tend to play. Shilka in the forest takes out the Cobra. I will say forest Shilkas are pretty good, but Shilka overall, just not worth it, I think. Destroy that entirely. Have just gone up and in, but I instead I want to rearm because I I feel like he already knows that this is gonna happen. Okay, he's assaulting me over here, and at the same time I have shit tons of artillery just nailing his assaulting force, and uh, his assault just gets eviscerated. Uh, you could argue he didn't need to do that, and if you argued that, you are entirely correct. He did not need to do that. Also, I had uh, I had six six howitzers <laughs> in this deck at this point in time too. It's pretty cool. Just nailing everything with the howitzers. And now my swarm is going this way. It's a very for the horde type of feeling deck, if you get what I'm saying, man. It's very for the horde, for the swarm ass deck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just running into his face. No smoke, no nothing. Just pat guns walking up. There it is. Well, I guess that's uh, that's enough. Hey boys, I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys how much... Well, what I think about this division. Also, I love it. It's my favorite division. Currently, I'm going to play the shit out of it. No doubt. Anyways, see you guys in the next. Thanks for watching.